it's by Austin Ramos here, and the Dolphins are now five and five after losing to Green Bay, thirty-one to twelve. Did I see that coming? Slightly. How it happened? Not at all. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. So let's go over some points that they. I mean, Miami had three points in the first quarter, six points in the second quarter, three points in the third quarter, and then. Zero in the fourth quarter. Only field goals. You can't win when you only kick field goals against Aaron Rodgers, and that's a fact. Meanwhile, Green Bay had seven points first quarter, seven points second quarter, 14 points in the third quarter, and three points in the, in the fourth quarter. 14 points in third quarter. I think I messed that up. I'm not sure. It's just frustrating when the team is being successful on their drives, and they're going down the field and getting in red zone, and then they just stall out and can't convert third downs or just get into the end zone Green Bay's defense isn't all that and we made them look like a great defense and that's really upsetting because they just traded away one of their best safeties in the ha ha Clinton Dix and like we could have exploited their secondary but we didn't unfortunately and what can we do I think defensively they played pretty good besides allowing I think uh, Aaron Jones to rush for like 145 yards Pets, his the longest one he had was like 67, and that was like the longest Packers run in like since 2013 or 2014. One of those two. Could the defense have played better? Yes. Could the offense have played better? Most definitely. Like, I hope we get Tannehill back after the bye week. Um, is it most likely that we're gonna get him back after the bye week? I'm not sure. They're saying there's some progression and that he's doing a little bit better and stuff like this, but you know, we just we need him back. We desperately especially with all these injuries. Jakeem Grant's probably gonna be sidelined for a bit because he looked like he almost tore his Achilles, but he didn't, thank God. And uh Devontae Parker had his arm in a sling, so knowing him he's probably not gonna play again this season. So this is so many injuries happening to the team, honestly. Now, before I go over some stats, I want to just tell you guys about the, the experience I had at Lambeau Field. It was pretty good. Uh, it was cold, but not as cold as I expected it to be. I was, I was actually, at some points, sweating. <laughs> um, but there was, the fans there were pretty cool. Uh, I was expecting Green Bay fans to be kind of, not ruthless, but just like, my face talking crap, stuff like that. They weren't like that. They were pretty cool people. I highly say if you have the chance to go to Green Bay and you can afford it and, and just stuff like that, take the trip. It's definitely worth it, 100%. It's a beautiful stadium. I didn't get to do the tour of the stadium or anything like that. Uh, I went from Chicago to Green Bay and back to Chicago all within one day. So it was kind of like get in, get out, that's the type of ordeal. But it was it was a fun experience. I, I liked I liked uh, going there to the game and it was it was quite fun. So I salute to you, all you cheese heads and taking all those tough environments onto that game and stuff like that. So offensively, we didn't have that bad of an outing. Uh, Brock Osweiler went 23 for 37 for 213 yards, one interception, and he got sacked six times for a loss of 50 yards. Um, the one interception went to Bashad Breeland. He jumped the pass, uh, but it was honestly a bad throw. It was on their throne. If you put it over him, the, I mean, the, the worst that could happen is the defender, you know, plays the ball and defends him. But besides that, he had a chance to jump the ball and and to get back. For he put it, he brought it pretty decently back into uh, Miami territory. Rushing wise, we had Frank Gore. He had 13 carries for 90 yards. Then we have Kenyon Drake, who has eight carries for 27 yards. Uh, Frank Gore. His longest one was like 39 yards, and it was like the first play of the game. It was pretty cool. Receiving-wise, we have Danny Amendola, who has seven receptions for 72 yards. Next, we have Devontae Parker with five receptions for 43 yards. Uh, Kenny Stills with two receptions for 26 yards. And Leonte Crew has one reception for uh, 20 yards. And then he also had one carry for 14 yards on a fake punt on fourth down. And then he also recovered a fumble. And that was on special teams as well. Uh, he had a pretty decent game. Uh, hopefully he can, can
continue to develop and not be so you know in the back in the on the back of Adam Gase's mind when it comes to offense now also Brock Osweiler lost uh, a snap that went over his head and he lost the fumble he had a couple opportunities to honestly get the ball and he got like at least two decent opportunities and he's he did he wasn't cutting it well uh, defensively we have TJ McDonald seven tackles uh, Raekwon McMillan five tackles Bobby McCain five tackles Kiko Alonso three tackles Xavier Howard four tackles Rashad Jones three tackles Robert Quinn Cameron Wake they were you know getting held so much but they ended up uh, Robert Quinn got one and a half sacks and Cameron Wake got half a sack they were they were you know getting held a majority of the game and it was really frustrating just seeing I mean I could have seen uh, on four separate occasions that Robert Quinn got held and it wasn't called I'm not saying that's the reason the offense lost but you know you want the game called as fair as possible if it was the other way around they would want their uh, pass rushers like Clay Matthews and stuff to get a cause if they're being hit if he's being held Jason Sanders scored all the points he had all 12 points he had four field goals and I told you guys to pick him up on fantasy, so whoever believed and listened to me, they were, you must have been happy, but whatever. Now let's go over to Packers. Aaron Rodgers, he played well, but he didn't beat us necessarily. But he did enough to get the Packers to win. He had 19 completions on 28 attempts, and he had 199 yards. And he had two touchdowns, and he was sacked twice. Uh... I believe one time it was like on third down and one time it was like on fourth down. I don't know if it was the same drive or not. So it was the Aaron and Aaron show pretty much because uh, Aaron Rodgers and, and Aaron Jones is lit up Miami's defense to be honest. Aaron Jones, the running back, had 15 carries for 145 yards and he had two touchdowns. So they were pretty much all the offense. And also their leading receiver, Devontae Adams, had four receptions for 57 yards and he had two touchdowns. So it was those three guys who really just made the difference in this game to be honest also receiving they had Marquez Valdez Scantling I always try to trouble saying his name but he had six receptions for 44 yards and just pretty much fell off after that uh, Mercedes Lewis one reception 30 yards Aaron Jones had three receptions 27 yards and there's a couple more but not no not noted it's worthy of mentioning their leading tacklers were Blake Martinez with nine, Josh Jackson with five, uh, Gene Lowry with uh, five as well, Josh Jones five tackles, Jair Alexander five tackles, and Kyle Fackerell, I, I'm not sure how you say his name, but he had like four tackles, Tony Brown three tackles, and the rest were just like ones and twos. Clay Matthews didn't really do that much. Uh, the offensive line did a pretty good job with holding a lot. But he had like two, he had like two QB hits, so he he was getting to Brock Osweiler, but not as much. Now Green Bay wanted this win more than the Dolphins did, plain and simple. I was sitting right behind the Dolphins bench, and I didn't really see much life coming out of them. They weren't as amped to try to compete for this win and so on. Uh, but when in a day that New England loses, and you want the Dolphins to win because that, if we win, we're six and four and the New England 7-3 and three, and then we face them and we possibly get uh, we when, when we face them again this later on this year in Miami we got a win and we keep on pace with them I mean we're, we're competing for the AFC AFC East uh, title and we have a, a guaranteed playoff spot and a guaranteed home playoff game but whatever New England 7-3 and three, Miami is 5-5 five and, five, and Buffalo is 3-7 and seven, so they have the lead over <laughs> the New York Jets so I'm not sure who's the worst team in the AFC East right now and then when you look at the NFC North you have the Chicago Bears 6-3 and three, Minnesota 5-3-1 and one, and then Green Bay 4-4-1 four, four and, and then we have the Lions who are 3-6 and six, and they're probably just done for a season right now now when it comes to standings and like how the playoff picture kind of looks uh, we have the Kansas City Chiefs first seed uh, Pittsburgh Steelers second seed New England Patriots third seed Houston Texans fourth seed then we'll ha uh, have the Chargers fifth seed then the Bengals uh, at the, the Bengals will be the sixth seed then we'll have the Titans 
And the Dolphins, Ravens, Colts, Cleveland Browns, and Jacksonville Jaguars are teams that are in the hunt. I think Cincinnati's going to fall off. So I see them dropping out of there. But a lot can happen between now and week 17 when the regular season's over. And that's who you, when you know for sure who's in the playoffs or not. There's a, a lot of games that the Dolphins can win down the line. I said, you know, they, we can afford to lose this game and still compete to make it in the playoffs. So I don't have a little loss in faith of the Dolphins going to the playoffs. It's just, it's obviously a setback. When you lose games, it's a setback. Uh, you don't you don't progress forward when you lose. So Dolphins just really need to put it together and get wins and, and compete down the line. I mean, the remaining of our schedule is the, our bye week. We're at the Colts, we're versus the Bills, versus Patriots, at the Vikings, versus Jaguars, and then at the Bills to close off the season. All those games are winnable. The only game I consider the Dolphins actually losing is the Vikings, and that depends on how they show to play. It's at an inside stadium, so you don't have to worry about weather conditions or none of that. It all depends how they come to play. The Dolphins come to play every single game from here on out, they win. If we get Tannehill back, not saying he's going to be a game changer and make the offense 10 times better, but I like our odds with Tannehill better than I do with Brock Osweiler. Quite simple. So that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a nice thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel and click the notification option, uh, the bell option, if you want to get notified every single time I upload a video. And let's go Dolphins. Let's, uh, let's enjoy this bye week. Just root for teams to lose and the Dolphins to move up in the, in the playoffs. Uh, picture but besides that that's all I have for you guys this week and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing any Dolphins related videos uh, during the bye week but I'll see how it's going and thank you for watching Miami